Hey guys, it's Greg from Beck Albert again, and welcome back to another Linux Basics video. Today we'll be taking a look at how to install Steam on Linux, and also how to enable the Steam Proton compatibility layer to allow you to play numerous Windows games that don't have native Linux client support. Plus, we'll also go over some other smaller tips to make your Linux gaming experience a little bit smoother, so you can spend less of your time tinkering around and more of your time gaming. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. So, getting right into the good stuff, Steam is actually pretty easy to install. Like a lot of software, it's available in most Linux distributions package repositories. If this is so, then that means you can just crack open a terminal, type in sudo apt install steam, and ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, Steam is readily available in most popular distributions repositories, but because Steam is 32-bit and closed source, you'll first need to enable your distros either 32-bit or non-free software repositories. For example, in Arch Linux, you need to enable the multi-lib repo in etsy slash pacman.conf, and for Debian, you need to enable the non-free repository in your apt sources.list file. Cool, now that that's out of the way, you can now run that sudo apt install steam, enter your password if you're prompted for it, and accept the changes. Of course, you'll need to replace apt in the command with your distro's package manager, and on the screen in front of you, I've put some examples of the commands you would need if you're running other distributions. Sick, Steam is now installed, and that was super easy. Obviously, the next step is to sign in with your account. Of course, I skipped that since, well, I don't want to show that to you. Anyways, at this point, you can now play games that are natively available for Linux, which includes some bigger games like Rise of the Tomb Raider and Borderlands 2, and some smaller ones like Towerfall Ascension and Speedrunners. But back in 2018, Valve released Proton, which is a compatibility layer to run Windows games on Linux through Steam. It's basically a bundle of various tools like Wine, DXVK, and others that Valve just pieces together and integrates with Steam very well to make it a mostly seamless experience. If you're interested in learning how it works, I'll leave the Wikipedia entry on it to get started in the video description, but the gist of it is that it's just a bunch of black magic. Moving on, regardless of how it actually works, enabling it is actually pretty easy to do. Just go to the Steam menu in the upper left corner of your window, then go to Settings. In the new window, click on the Steam Play section on the left. Now check the box for Enable Steam Play for supported titles, and then check the Enable Steam Play for all other titles. What these two boxes do is, well, pretty self-explanatory. The first one allows you to run games through Proton that Valve have gone through and verified work with it, and the second one enables Proton for games that Valve have not verified. You can also select a specific Proton version to pin using this drop-down menu if you find one that works better for your games, but personally I'd recommend just leaving this set as experimental by default and changing the version for individual games if you need to do so. Cool, so now you should be up and running with Steam and be able to start configuring things like your game storage drives, controllers and all that junk, and you should be able to play most, if not all, of your games. But there are a few more things I would like to point out to you all to make your Linux gaming experience a little bit smoother. The first tweak is adding your user to the input group on your system so that you can use your controllers to play your games with. Because everything on Linux is treated as a file or some sort of special file, devices that you connect to your system are also treated like a file and thus have permissions that need to be handled. Now you could go through and just make yourself the owner of all these controllers by either chamotting the controllers when they're added to your system or modifying your system's UDEV rules to make yourself the owner by default. But there is a much easier way to do this, just adding yourself to the input group. Open up a terminal and run sudo usermod dash lowercase a capital G, input, and then your username. In this case, I put in bitgoblin. All you need to do now is log out and log back in. And now when you connect a controller, you should see this controller pop up in Steam and do whatever else Steam needs to do with the controller. Note that this may not work for every Linux distro since every single distro has their own set of groups and nonsense that may not exactly line up with this. But this has worked for me on Debian, Ubuntu and its descendants like Mint and Pop, Fedora, and Arch Linux. The next tip that I have isn't really Linux specific, but it is super helpful nonetheless. Go back to Steam menu, then settings, and then go to the shader pre-caching tab. What this is, is when you open up a game and start playing it, your system will need to compile the shaders for that game, and this can lead to either longer loader times or negatively impact frame rates if it's doing it mid-game. This shader pre-caching thing lets Steam download pre-compiled shaders that match your hardware for your games so that your system isn't doing this mid-game and thus improving game load times and alleviates hitching while playing. 
So to enable this, just check the box to enable shader pre-caching. And then if you want, you can also check the box for enabling background processing of shaders. Enabling the second box will let Steam take care of this process of downloading the pre-compiled shaders automatically so that they're ready for you when you want to play a game. The downside of this though, is it can increase your bandwidth and battery usage since you'll be downloading shaders that you might not necessarily need, say if you have a game installed that it downloads shaders for, but you don't actually play. Thus, if you're limited on bandwidth via a bandwidth cap or are running on battery power, you may want to leave the second box unchecked and just let Steam download shaders on demand when you open up a game. One last thing you'll want to do is if you're on a laptop running hybrid graphics, for instance, if your laptop has an Intel CPU with integrated graphics plus an NVIDIA discrete GPU, is to tell your games to use the discrete GPU instead of the crappy integrated graphics. If you've got at least a somewhat recent NVIDIA driver version, at least version 470 or later, then you can run your games using NVIDIA Prime Render Offloading. Doing this is actually pretty simple. All you've got to do is right click on a game in Steam, go to properties, in the launch command field, enter this text on screen, underscore underscore NV underscore prime underscore render underscore offload equals one, then percent command percent. That works for games using the Vulkan API or for GLX applications, you will also need to add the underscore underscore GLX underscore vendor underscore library underscore name equals NVIDIA flag before the percent command, just like so. Yeah, that was kind of a mouthful to say, as you can tell, and it's kind of a pain in the butt to type manually. So I'm going to leave a link or something in the video description so you can just copy and paste the command instead of typing it in yourself. Now, I understand this is a little bit tedious because there isn't a way that I found to just set these arguments for all games in Steam without affecting other non-Steam applications. But you only have to do this once per game, and at least in theory, your games should run better after doing this. Also, if you've got an AMD graphics card, I'm sure there is a similar feature to this. I just haven't had a laptop with AMD discrete graphics on it so that I can test it with. So if you've done this before, feel free to post a solution to this down in the comment section below and I'll pin the comment so others can see it. All right, so that's all I have for this one. And now be sure to let me know what you think of this little tutorial in the comment section down below. If it was helpful, if I got something wrong, or even if you have other tips or tricks to add, whatever it is, be sure to drop it down in the comment section. As always, if you dislike the video, then you know what to do. But if you did like it, then go hit that like button and also consider getting subscribed and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss my future videos. I've also got a Discord server if you'd like to join the community and just chat and hang out with us. Or if you need it, you can get help with your Linux gaming problems. I hope you all have a great day and I'm gonna catch you in the next one.